hey guys welcome back to my channel thank you so much for clicking in thank you for your likes overwhelming comments positive negative they are always welcomed here apart from the insults because we don't insult and we don't expect other people to insult us now guys i just want to say thank you big big thank you you know for me i'm still celebrating you know guys for me i don't take celebration so easily i celebrate for weeks for months hey you know how i do it guys obviously you saw what happened with my birthday mm -mm -mm. i don't just celebrate once i'm still celebrating you guys thank you so much for your support and love i don't take it so it for granted i really really appreciate you guys always coming back to check on me leaving your comments in the comment section oh by the way i've been reading a lot of comments and there are other comments that i've also learned from i'm coming back to that now i want to appreciate my moderators i want to appreciate my keyboard reactors i want to appreciate my premier gang i want to appreciate my silent followers okay i want to appreciate my super slappers i want to appreciate everyone everyone who is always with me on this journey thank you thank you thank you thank you so much now i've been in yabohanse for some time at least for the two for the last two hours and i'm still there by the way because mara is doing a live and i've been watching it from the beginning as you can see here or the internet has started bringing issues and i wanted to talk about this internet issue okay so mara is on he is on and he's receiving gifts let me reduce this he's receiving gifts gifts after gifts after gifts after gifts and everyone is doing a shout out i don't know how many people are in that building definitely there are many many people he's been giving shout outs to almost everyone in the building christmas list is in the building uncle mo is in the building uh, nasto is in the building majake is in the building my yugno is in the building <laughs> those are just the close ones and then the rest I don't know the IT guy. I don't know the internet guy. I don't know the plumper. I don't know all these people. And then now the YouTubers. It's crazy. It's crazy. The Mara that says that he's sick. He has not been feeling well. He has the energy to be standing with the camera for the last two hours. You know? And he's still on. He is still on. And donations are dropping like it's hot. Like it's hot. Because you see, when people see these gifts, they are they feel so, you know, so challenged. They're like, oh, gifts are coming in your bohanze. I haven't given mine. Oh, my goodness. And now the donations start dropping. Oh, my goodness, they've been dropping. There's that girl, African, African tea, African cook. You know, Marwa called her What's African, up, African cook, African tigress. <laughs> he happened to call her African tigress. And then he was like, no, it's not African tigress. It's the African cook. Yeah. Yeah, she broke her phone. And people were sending money through Marwa to give to this girl. Now, the money that is being sent definitely as super chats. It's not the money that she will just remove today and give it out. Because this money comes through the revenue. So if you're sending super chats, definitely the money, like if you're sending super chats this month, the money will be received late december so if you are sending money for this girl and maro is trying to explain this thing if you are sending money to this girl just know that she will not get the money today or tomorrow and yet she needs the phone because people are sending him money through super chats for this girl to get the phone because her phone broke and it's the only you know item that she uses to shoot videos, edit videos, and do everything. So she, Maro is like, this money has to be taxed. I can't remove this money and give it the way it is. This money has to be taxed because YouTube is taxing me 30% from my revenue. So if you are sending this money through my revenue, this money also has to be taxed. Hey, I had that. I was like, like really, Maro, you can't help anyone. Just apart from helping people for views and subscribers, there's nothing else that you can do for someone, like for real. Anyway, that's what he said. Now, 
that was not even the story you know it just came by they have been listening to a lot of things you know as i i've just told you the video i think it's off now it's i think the video is the live is done now that live took almost two and a half hours the live is done so i've been collecting a lot of stories and i'm like okay let me talk about these stories here you know let's just analyze together and maybe agree or disagree about some of these things i don't know what you think you think about that like is it right for marwa to also tax the money that other people sent him to give to this girl is it right can you let me know because we definitely know that okay for example let's say someone sent 99.99 us dollars another one added 20 after listening to marwa saying that oh this money has to be taxed so you don't expect her to get the exact money that you have sent to me you know they tax me 30 percent my whole revenue so i also have to tax 30 percent of the money that you have sent and remember this money is for her to buy the phone and marwa is talking about taxing also that money so that he can give her the rest so when he said this, people started adding more money <laughs> for her. 20 US dollars added on that one. Another 20 US dollars added on that one. And Maro is like, listen guys, listen, enough, 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 enough. Don't send me this money. Maybe you wait. Hold on, wait. Tomorrow we'll do a video with her and then she will give you her contacts. You can send this money direct to her. But the money that you've just given me, it has to be taxed. And I'm like, she's your village cook. You know, you're not even paying her anything. In the video, he said that. I'm not even paying her anything. And even the girl said that her videos are very expensive. Sometimes she buys a lot of food and she does the video with it. And the video doesn't return enough of what she, she had invested in. And she's doing it there and Marwa is not paying her anything. But by the end of the day, when people send this money to her, he's like, I also have to tax, tax the money. And now that's why I'm asking you. Is it right? What do you feel about that? Can you let me know in the comment section? Now, this video, as I've told you, I've, as I've started shooting, the video was on, the live was on, so I couldn't get the receipts very well for you, but it's the last video that he has just done in the last two hours. One thing that I also noticed in that live, when Marwa was talking to this man, Steve. If you remember, guys, yesterday, Marwa did a video, live stream. And then something happened in between. It had to be cut off. And then later, he complained that the internet went off. Something is wrong with the internet. In the comment section, people came bashing and calling out this internet guy, the Steve J1. They were calling him, they were calling him, telling him that he's fake, he's a fraud, he's this, you know, all these things. So the man came out to explain himself in the video. As this man is still explaining himself, hey guys, have you met Marwa's new PA? That girl, Jep, Jep something. This girl started attacking this internet guy live on camera. Live on camera until Mara had to tell her, please move, just move because you know you, you, you are shaming this man. You know, you, you're just like <laughs> you know, accusing someone of something that you're not sure. And the man is still trying to explain himself and everything. But you know what, guys? I've seen so many frauds or fraud businesses happening in Yabohanse, myself. As a Kenyan, I look at things and I understand. People come there with stuff and they tell Marwa different prices. But when we go back to our Kenyan market, we have our own online Kenyan market. We check those things that Marwa received. He was told how much and what is on the ground. We see different things. Like, <laughs> hey, you know, shout out to you, Kelvo. Director Kelvo wrote to me, he told me, Carol, can you imagine those lights that that guy had brought to Marwa? They are too cheap, even in Nairobi. But the guy was calling for, I don't know how many dollars. People are coming with things, exaggerating the prices because they think this is the rich Marwa in the village. He doesn't understand anything about these things. 
He doesn't even live in Kenya to start with. He doesn't even understand the Kenyan market. He's just came from I don't know Mexico and he's in and he wants all these things. People are bringing in things, they are super overcharging him. So when this issue of internet came and people are calling him a fraudster and all these names, I was like, wow. Askama meets as askama. <laughs> yeah, askama meets askama. These people are bringing things in your hands, by the way. Oh my goodness. They're eating with a big spoon. Because the prices, they're overpricing Maro big time. I wanted to talk about this thing and I was like, they're doing their business, you know. Maro should have known better. He has the internet. You can check on the Kenyan market if someone sells you. If someone tells you, I have a Samsung I don't know a something a23 and i'm selling it at a hundred thousand and you are in the village you can check it on the on the kenyan market through google google will tell you the prices of such a phone in kenya and where it is found definitely it's something that is so simple and i don't understand why marwa doesn't get these things <laughs> he is not getting it if someone brings those lights check it we have our online uh, apps that we check from we have Kilimall app we have jumia you check on jumia jumia will tell you the real price of that item that they brought to you it's too simple but i don't understand maybe marwa doesn't know all these things i don't know maybe the new pa will start teaching him to understand these things that are coming in because it's so crazy you know it's so crazy even that guy who went to bring some stuff chandeliers and uh, the tents from china and you know the prices when Maro is talking about six thousand, six thousand what U.S. dollars for what? These chandeliers are here in Nairobi. These chandeliers are, in fact, I I can take him if he wants. <laughs> the chandeliers are on these streets, River Road. If you go to River Road, you will get the best prices when you're doing chandeliers, the best prices. But this guy tells Maro, oh, I can bring it from China. There is no China. I don't agree with that guy. I don't agree with that guy. Those things are found in Nairobi with very cheap, cheap prices. Now, when this girl, the PA, came out attacking this Steve J, the internet guy, see in the comment section, it was a live chat, right? In the live chat, people are like, Yes, yes, this girl is so this. Oh, where's Paris? Oh, Paris never did this. Oh, ne Paris never saw this. Ne uh, Paris never defended Maro when this matters. You know, they just sit aside. And oh, blah, blah, blah. Oh, this girl is the best for Maro. Oh, blah. You know, people are just like hailing this girl. That, oh, she's tough and all these kind of things. Now, <laughs> my question is, where is Paris? Where is Minhawi? And the other guy who was also keeping them, the Cloud Joseph guy and the rest, they've always been in Marwa's lives. These people have always been in Marwa's lives. Today, I could not... I've been there, guys, for the last two hours. I've been there following everything. You know, John told me... <laughs> shout out to you, John Kenyandri. John told me, Carol, I feel for you. You know, you end up, is it John? Yeah, and Tarbo, Vanille. You know, you end up watching even the most boring parts of Marwa's videos. Yes, guys, it is part of my job. What can I do? See, <laughs> guys, I know it's funny, but it's at the same time, it is work. I'm sitting here watching the whole live trying to check out if i can come across paris mean howie or cloud joseph or burundian traveler you know the first people who came to nyabohansi to be with maro the people who've been close to maro before i didn't see them in this live i did not see them guys and now maro is here Racing this PA girl and the PA girl is all over the place trying to throw out all her powers she wants the whole environment to feel her she wants the other people to know that she's in control 
Okay? She has really taken over. It's crazy. It is crazy. It is crazy. As they are still talking about this Steve and the internet. Let's come to back to that internet issue. This is what some of the people are telling Steve. I want to read for you some of the comments that people have been writing down there, okay? Someone says, Steve, bring heavy bandwidth. Because maybe the one that you people are using there, it's not heavy enough to contain all the people who are coming over there in the village, especially the YouTubers. Most of them, they say that they cannot even upload their videos with that Wi-Fi that is, th is there. And also, why is the Wi-Fi going off like that and stuff like that? So they are advising him to bring some heavy bandwidth. Now, another one said, Steve seems shallow in matters of IT. Because he's trying to explain, you know, you know this, you know that. And people are reading him. And they're like, this guy is very shallow. He's very shallow in these matters of IT. Where did he get all this you know, it's, it's not that he cannot explain any, anything because he's not an internet guy. He's, he's a broker. He just came in and, you know, he was like, Maro, I can bring this thing for you. And then he went and brought some internet people to do the work and they left. And now he's left there, not answering the questions. This one said, we told you, Marwa, we told you to go for professionals. This one said, we told you to go for professionals. <laughs> Another one say, how will they create content away from the villa? When they leave the villa, even after the party, because now they came there in the villa, they're making content with your Wi-Fi and now after that, what will be their next move? How will they be making their content now without your Wi-Fi? Someone asked that in the comment section. Another one said, you travel to Marwa and you can't afford data. Wow. You have all the money to travel from wherever you're coming from to Marwa's wow. village, but you don't have money to buy data. You are depending on Marwa's internet. And then now you're coming out here to cry all over the place. We want internet. We want internet. These are some of the comment sections. <laughs> anyway, another one said, the PA is too much confronting Steve. She even can't wait for him to explain. This is what I was telling you guys. She's all over the place. That Irene girl, she's all over the place. You know, you will feel like that internet is her own. You know, she's behaving. You know, I don't understand some people. They'll come in your life and then they will behave like they're the owner of that place they want to take over Mara is trying to tell her don't be so harsh on steve he's trying to explain something but she doesn't want to listen so this some um, uh, this person was saying that you know she's too much you know she doesn't even want this man to explain himself although the man was so shallow in his you know explaining another one said <laughs> paris got what she needed and left is it true guys can you let me know in the comment section then guys you know it's been a long one I, i'm trying to to read all these comments that i've been going through in the comment section i'm just trying to bring it the way it is now the thing that really challenged me that i felt like i should share with you is that boy nasto it's Nasto. Nasto challenged also Marwa. And he also challenged me. When Marwa introduced him, and he said, oh, guys, this is Nasto. Actually, after Mayugno, after my villa, it's Mayugno's villa that is second, and then Nasto's villa is the one that is also coming up. But there is a problem with Nasto, guys, because when I came in, people were telling me, reporting to me, that Nasto has made the pieces of lands in Yabahonse to go high. Why? So he was asking Nasto, Nasto, why did you do that? We are so much used to buying cheap land, cheap land, cheap land. And now you, you are coming to tell these people 
that you can give them a lot of money why did you do that now you see you have made some of us now we cannot buy land because everyone has shot their prices up and naso had to come out and explain to marwa guys i just want you to listen to naso his challenge this boy is smart listen to this naso is a nice guy but he has increased the price of land here he bought land times two. Now all the neighbors when we want to buy land they say if that land was this money you you want to give me this I think if you want something yeah. you know, just go for it money you know you can Mayugno you know, what do you think Shamba imepanda juu ya Nasto juu ya Nasto if you want Nasto only back now we need it yeah okay we are building a here okay it is like a look for you someone can buy something different What are you saying, my uh, Village is grow. Okay. Like a someone can born something different. Okay. So we grow like a miracle, like a spirit. But uh, guys, when you come to buy land, come uh, with your name of your grandfather. It's not your name. Okay. Because we need to know you from the uh, spirit direct. Okay. Right. In the name guys, of this is my Yugno. My Yugno and Nasto, they're actually one of my very, very close guys that I really like in the village. because uh, yes i think yeah. if i buy land from someone yeah i want that money that i give them yeah maybe help them because maybe oh, no, but, you but honestly not too much let me say, you know someone tells you last time i need to build maybe a house okay and i have a piece of land yeah if i give him maybe like uh, 150000 okay. that's me will not build a house. that's true yeah so Yeah, so you are a, a, a rich guy. I'm not a rich guy. I just want <laughs> Okay, okay. But uh, okay, that's a side, guys. I was just making a joke, but I'm telling you effect of everybody here, like African village cook. When I come in the village, that's the first thing they tell me. Hey, this guy uh, gave that lady too much money now. Everybody is asking for this. When you go to that lady's home, they yeah. build a house. Okay. Furnished everything that house. Okay. So, even uh, maybe someone will say at least i maybe had it changed yeah, okay. they actually have a very nice house so you're looking beyond the money yeah, okay. okay. you see guys what is happening in yabohanse the boys that marwa is bringing up now they're even becoming more smarter than marwa like in nastos case he says that he's looking beyond the money He is looking beyond the money. When he's buying this piece of land, he also wants the owner of that land to also benefit from the money that he's giving him. Instead of giving someone only 100,000 Kenyan shillings. And you know very well that even if I'm getting that piece of land, it's very helpful to me. But this money I'm giving this person is not going to help him at all. It's just too small petty money. And this is what Maro has been doing. Marwa the pieces of land that he's been buying peanuts peanuts and now they're saying that since Nasto is paying double of the money that they've been buying the land with it looks like now Nasto I think there's going to be some some issues there because the way Marwa has brought it and even to an extent of bringing it on camera Marwa was not happy about it In fact she has even said the people who told him about that he said this lady village cook girl when he arrived they are the ones who ran with all this information to Marwa Marwa you see well, you see what Nasto has done hmm? Marwa you see Nasto has bought that piece of land twice the prices the normal prices and now you see you see <laughs> what is happening in Bohanse guys people are like this reporting everything to Marwa what was the reason of this girl going to report Nasto to Marwa so that they can collide or something but you see Nasto is coming out explaining so clearly he's like bro it's more about money is is this is this is that what she is that what she said it's beyond money it's beyond the money You know I also want to help people. I also want to, you know, uplift people's lives. Imagine someone like uh Baba Ann's brother, the one who sold that piece of land to Mayugno. Being a drunkard, he comes and he says, "Uh give me 50,000 because he wants to go and drink." 
And for you, you don't look beyond that. You don't want even to help this person. You just want your piece of land as cheap as it is. And you know very well that in one week's time, this guy will have finished all the money. And you, you are remaining with the, your piece of land. You know, I think that should be a lesson to all the boys in Yabohanze who are buying pieces of lands. You should be looking beyond that. It reminds me of a story someone did just near where I stay. This man looked beyond the money when he went to buy this piece of land near the road. He has constructed a very nice guest house. They call it a, a, a lodge or something. Very nice with gazebos and everything. But when this man came to buy this piece of land, it belonged to this man who was very drunk. He a drunkard. Totally. He never gave that man the money. He told this man, listen, you're selling me this piece of land, but I'm not giving you the money. I want to construct a house for you. I want to buy for you a border border so that at least you have a place to come back home to. And this border border will help you. You know, the border border here, guys, the, the motorbikes, yeah? This motorbike will be helping you during the day when you are sober, you will be, you know, carrying people and getting money with it. So that at least by the end of the day, you have something to eat. And that is how I see it, you know? Every time I meet that guy with his border border just near my house, you know, he's just sitting there. When he's sober, he's doing his work. He goes back to his home. What if this guy had given that man that small money and say, oh, let me tell him just small money because he's a drunkard. He won't understand. You know, guys, sometimes we need to be human. When I listen to this nasty story, it really moved me. Like, honestly, it really, really moved me. And I said, wow, let me share with you guys that for the first time, someone has come out to challenge Marwa right on his face, live on his camera, on his channel. He came out and he said, I don't feel so bad about it because when you go into that lady's house, she did the house, she built the house, she has furnished the house, and now she has everything that she has ever dreamed of. Just because she sold the piece of land to me. And I feel so good because I have changed her life. Guys, I was so moved when I saw that. I was so moved. The video has been going on, guys. The video has been going on. The live was so long. But I just wanted to, you know, like, you know, share with you that the other thing that I saw Mara was talking about advising these YouTubers was to avoid lies and fake news. And he gave an example. Oh, you see the people who come and say, oh, I gave my mom 1000 US dollars. <laughs> when Mara said that, I remember the video that David Jr. did with the mom. He came with the money and he gave the mom the same same money that was supposed to go for the construction is the one that is coming to clickbait and show people that he has the money the same 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 money after i don't know a week or something he took the same money and he went to do the same video with his dad <laughs> guys you know anyway i said oh marwa now is coming for david jr he also said something about vacation he said you see there is no need for you to say that you're going for a vacation when you don't have enough means to go for that vacation. And I'm thinking, Maro, are you coming for David Jr.? Because the other day, David Jr. left that he was going for a vacation with his mom. And then, I don't know where Congress mom went to. After receiving that girl at the airport, guys, where did she go to? <laughs> I don't know what happened. It looks like when Maro is giving these examples, something must have been going on or something is going on we don't know but he's trying to advise these people that don't do that that means that is what david jr is doing don't do that okay okay for the first time and i was so happy about tomorrow you know here guys it's all about agreeing and disagreeing i was so happy i was smiling at amarwa's video for the first time ever when Marwa came out and introduced Uncle Mo 
in a happy mood and introduced Uncle Mo in a very respectful way and he gave people the story about him and Uncle Mo, how they have grown up since Uncle Mo's mom died and he moved in the house, how he's been a brother to him, what they've been doing, milking the cows, taking care of the goats, sleeping with the goats and all these stories. And Uncle Mo was, you know, like happy around and everything. And I was like, wow, for the first time, Marwa. Hey, why can't you do this to everyone around you? Everyone that you've been filming with. You know, we thank God. In fact, in that video, I think he said that he has helped Uncle Mo. That's what he said. You know, he had to clear some stories because, you know, those people are not reactors. So they don't know a lot of stories that we know. <laughs> so it's like, you know, I'm the one who came with my money. I gave Uncle Mo 50,000 to go and open a butchery. When I came back, Uncle Mo was still keeping the money. So I'm the one who told Uncle Mo to start his house. That is what Marwa said, and he lied. Because according to previous videos, when Uncle Mo, actually when Marwa was interviewing Uncle Mo, Uncle Mo said that, you gave me the money to start a butchery, but I decided to start my own house. That is what Uncle Mo said in that interview, Marwa was interviewing him. But today, Marwa is saying that he is the one who told Uncle Mo to start the house, which is a lie. Number two, Christmas list, you know, he's at Uncle Mo's place. He's staying at Uncle Mo's place. And Marwa is saying that he's the one who started that house and everything. But definitely Marwa also contributed to that house. And that is a fact. Uncle Mo proved that in that interview. But he's not the one who started the house for Uncle Mo. When he contributed a little bit to that house, Michele Ponte came in the village and he started helping Uncle Mo to build his house. He called for some donations to put on the windows and everything and opening a channel for Uncle Mo. It was Michele Ponte, who is Dimwango's ex-boyfriend. For those who are new here, let me put it that way. You understand? Marwa cannot talk about that, definitely. He just brushed that story off. Talking of now who came now to finish up Uncle Mo's house, it was David Jr. and his donations. Marwa did not say that, but he took all the credit to himself and told the people that he's so happy that Uncle Mo has the best house. The house is so full furnished and everything. Guys who have gone to Uncle Mo's house, now you see Uncle Mo is hosting my friend Christmas list and everything. And you know, the way he's bragging about it. I said, it's okay. <laughs> it's okay. Okay, take it on, on yourself. But... For some of us, we know the truth. We know the truth. But anyway, Maru is just trying to clean up his name and to be that good guy, you know, be, because this wannabe is that they're learning him and they have to trust everything that he's saying and all those things and all those things and all those things. Christmas list comes out and he say, you know what? Uncle Mo is still sleeping in his mad house. He has never moved in his new house. Guys, I was broken. I was broken. I was broken. I wrote a message to someone who donated bed sheets, duvets, and all those things to Uncle Mo through me. Me, A.M. Carol. I bought all those things. I connected to Uncle Mo. I sent Uncle Mo all these things through one of his subscribers. All those duvets I bought... Two pairs, I think, there were two pairs for his bed and another one for his daughter. Two, two, two. Bed sheets, pairs and pairs. Only to hear today that Uncle Mo is still sleeping in his mud house. And the beds and all these beddings, we saw them because he was showing us on the camera in some of his videos the beds are done, the duvets are done and everything. So who is sleeping on all these things when he himself is still sleeping in the mud house with the chickens? It broke me. Hey, guys, listen to this first. Uncle Mo. Uncle Mo, how are you? This is Uncle Mo. Yes. How are you? 
Okay. Yes. We are here with the <laughs> eight one here. <laughs> okay. Okay. This is Uncle Mo. Okay, yeah. Uncle. You know, this is my real uncle. Brother to my mom. Yes. I'm happy. Oh, I'm happy to see people see me here around here. <laughs> Yeah, come on. Yeah. Give yourself a shout out. We have uh, two, three thousand nine hundred people watching. And let me just show them QR. Yeah. <laughs> QR. Yeah. Angomo. Uh, Angomo has a QR now. Angomo. <laughs> <laughs> now this QR was made with an international Nairobi city. Okay. When I went to dance this week. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Guys, this is Angomo. Sometimes okay. it's too too jovial until I'm, I get afraid. <laughs> yeah, sometimes, sometimes, not always. One minute. It's my real uncle. Yeah. Uh, I should tell you a story with Uncle Mo. <laughs> There's nobody who knows my life apart from this guy standing here. Uh, me and Uncle Mo. So my grandmother died, and my mom adopted uh, Uncle Mo as one of our own. This is Uncle Mo's. You can actually uh, scan. Yeah. Even Mara have not reached there. <laughs> I'll, I'll catch up. I'll catch up with Uncle Mo later. So Uncle Mo, yes. uh, my grandmother passed on, and my mom is the firstborn in their home. So adopted Uncle Mo, not really adopted, but brought him to a home as as his uh, as one of the the kids of our home now. And me and Uncle Mo, we grew up together. We used to milk cows five in the morning from four to five. Uncle Mo used you to milk. Your job? <laughs> yes. Uncle Mo used to milk. And I'm telling you, when we were really poor, forget about Villa Medellin and traveling the world. When life was, we didn't even have electricity. Uncle Mo, me, my job was to to, to sell. <laughs> I, I I hold the the, the lamp. Because it's dark and Uncle Mo will milk, milk, and I'll supply the milk the entire of Nyabohansi, then go to school before 6 a.m. It is true. <laughs> true story. And Uncle Mo is here. I, I, I like that because he's here. My dad had a lot of goats. We didn't have a place to stay. Goats used to, the small ones used to jump in our bed. We didn't even have the doors separating the goats. And we used to sleep with goats, cows. True story. It's true. Very true story. Story. <laughs> so me and Uncle Mo have grown together. We've struggled together. Even this land that I built, Villa Medellin, it used to be a crazy bush and with python snakes and with a lot of uh, those guinea fowl, those birds you see. And But my dad used to say, you have to go and bring a, a napier grass for the cows. We used to come here and early in the morning, Take and carry with our head or with our donkey, take it to Nyabohanse where we used to stay, where there is a small bill, every single day. So when I see this guy here, he reminds me of my childhood. Do you remember Toto is the one who is the one? So when I see him here, he reminds me of pure, strong journey of our lives when we were kids. And when I see him, you know, when I came first, when I, I started the YouTube channel. This is a story I have to tell you. I thought the YouTube channel far away from the story is just too long guys that story was just too long too long too long that is when now he came in to say that he came in from uh, Cambodia where is that country you know and he was having the money he gave uncle mo to start the butchery business and then he came back and then he said this and then the uncle mo started the house and blah 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 all those things he was talking about Uncle Mo and introducing Uncle Mo to the people. Guys, you see, you see success. <laughs> when you fight and you get there, that's when now people see you. If Uncle Mo would have not fought to get where he is, he won't be sitting there with these people. He'll be sitting very far. No one will even recognize him. No one will welcome him around his visitors, international visitors. But you see, Uncle Mo was striving. To reach where he is now now they can recognize him and laugh with him and shake hands with him if you remember how marwa was showing the video about uncle mo instead of putting on the belt in his in his trouser he was putting on a, a string something like a string plastic string that was cut from from a sack you know plastic sack 
Uncle Mo was cutting those, you know, strings and, you know, trying to tie himself up with. And Maro pulled his camera and he was showing the whole world how his uncle was. And I reacted on that video and Marwa came for me. <laughs> Marwa came for me big time. During that time, the manga was in Philippines constructing the house for Lola over there. And I came out, many of us, the reactors were talking about this. Everyone was like, guys, Dimwango is doing something for someone in Philippines. And your Uncle Mo house looks like what? And Marwa came out to start showing us Uncle Mo's toilet, the way it was looking, the latrine outside there. Guys, it was crazy. Showing Uncle Mo how his clothes were torn, all those strings on his body, everything, plastic containers all over the place, the, the mud house, the, how Uncle Mo was sleeping with the chicken and the goats. Now he's here saying, oh, Uncle Mo, oh, Uncle Mo, he has never been there in Uncle Mo's journey. He has never been there in Uncle Mo's journey. If it was not for Michele Ponte, these people, see, they're opening channels for everyone, but they never thought of opening a channel for Uncle Mo until a foreigner came in to open this channel for Uncle Mo. Guys, that story is a very sad story. I don't want to go back there. I don't want to go back there. Kindly, let's just end it here because I've been watching Marwa and all those things that are happening in that village is just something else. You know, we can sit here and talk about these stories a whole day, a whole night, a whole day without finishing. So let's just end it here. This is some of the things that I've collected from this live that Maro has just done. Okay, guys, leave your comments down below, like this video, and also subscribe to this channel if you haven't subscribed. Hit on this notification bell so that every time I upload a new video, you'll be among the first people to be notified, okay? Have you checked my merchandise, my store, guys? Kindly check and pick anything that you love. Actually, we have hoodies. We have t-shirts for men and women. We also have unisex. We have accessories like mugs and bags. Kindly check out and pick anything just to support this channel, AM Carol, and I will appreciate that. Okay, guys, what can I say more, guys? Thank you so much for being around, and let's meet on the next one.